Alright guys, here is part one of the ThinkPad Buyer's Guide video series that I'm working on. So today we are going to be comparing IBM ThinkPads to early Lenovo ThinkPads and why you should stick to one over the other. Now you might be a little bit confused because you're probably looking at these laptops and saying, Sebi, both of these have the IBM logo on them. Both of them are IBM ThinkPads, right? Well... I hate to break it to you, but not all ThinkPads with the IBM logo are, in fact, IBM ThinkPads. You see, when Lenovo bought the ThinkPad line from IBM, IBM allowed the company to continue to use the IBM logo on the ThinkPads for a couple of years after. So the T60, which was the first T-Series ThinkPad released by Lenovo, and the T61 sported the IBM logo. Some of the later ones dropped it, but you could get it with the IBM logo. Same with the X60 and X61 ThinkPads, which are the 12-inch counterparts. And some of the little off-series ThinkPads like the R60, the Z60, that sort of thing. So, some of the early Lenovo ThinkPads will in fact have the IBM logo. So, how can you tell if it's actually an IBM ThinkPad or a Lenovo ThinkPad? Uh, thankfully, there are a few physical differences between the two that will allow you to be able to tell which is which, even if you can't see the model number. If it is a T43, T42, T41, something like that, lower numbers like that, it's an IBM. If it's the T60, T61, something like that, it's going to be a Lenovo. If you can't see the model numbers of the different ThinkPads, there are some physical design quirks between the two that can help you tell which is which. So we're going to walk through some of them. I'm not going to tell you every difference between an IBM and a Lenovo ThinkPad, but I'm going to tell you enough that you can look on eBay or you can look at a Craigslist posting or when you're at a garage sale or flea market, you can tell right off the bat if it's an IBM or a Lenovo ThinkPad. First off, this one is kind of obvious. But if you look on the Lenovo T60 here, it actually says right next to the T60, it says Lenovo. If it's an IBM ThinkPad, it's not going to say Lenovo on it, except some of the later T43s will say on the bottom, manufactured for Lenovo. But other than that, there's no Lenovo branding, and there's still IBM ThinkPads. But uh, it will say Lenovo on it even if it also says IBM. If it says Lenovo on it, it's a Lenovo ThinkPad. Also, if you look at the keyboard on the two, the Lenovo ThinkPad will have a Windows key, and it will also have a context menu key. IBM ThinkPads do not have Windows keys, so if your laptop has a Windows key, it is a Lenovo ThinkPad. If it has no Windows keys to speak of, it's an IBM ThinkPad. Also, you can look at the function keys, um, the IBM ThinkPads have gray function keys. The Lenovo ThinkPads switch to black. However, I should note some older IBM ThinkPads have black function keys. Uh, so be aware of that. Be on the lookout for that. But even if that is the case, there are some other physical differences that can help you compare the two. There's a little blue button in the top left corner of the ThinkPads. If it's an IBM ThinkPad, it will say Access IBM. If it's a Lenovo ThinkPad, it will say Think Vantage on it. Other physical differences between IBM and Lenovo ThinkPads. Um, IBM ThinkPads have a uh, parallel port on the back for hooking the thing up to a printer. Lenovo ThinkPads do not have that, they just have ventilation. Uh, IBM ThinkPads also have an S-Video output for connecting to a TV or monitor or projector or whatever. Lenovo dropped that. Also, the Lenovo ThinkPads added a third USB port. Another thing I should note is the IBM ThinkPads use a different type of power connector than the Lenovo ThinkPads. The, it looks kind of the same, but then you real, when you look closer, you realize that they are completely different connectors. Also, the batteries will look similar, but they are incompatible with each other. The docking port was changed, so an IBM docking station will not work with a Lenovo laptop and vice versa. The uh, IDE interface for the optical drives was the same between the older IBM ThinkPads and the 
original Lenovo ThinkPads. However, the battery connector was changed, so a Ultra Bay battery that was designed for the T43 will not work with the T60. There are some other uh, physical differences. Uh, the Lenovo ThinkPads introduced the wireless switch, which allows you to turn off all of the wireless radios, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, 3G or 4G, internet, anything like that. Uh, you can just flip a switch and it will turn them off. And this was not present on IBM ThinkPads. Next, we start to get into under the hood changes. These were um, both in terms of the processing power, the chipset, Four hard drives, IBM ThinkPads, all of them use IDE interface, which is the old school PETA, it was also called PETA interface, but I know it as IDE. It's where you have all of those little pins on the end of the hard drive. And this is a slow, outdated, obsolete format. It's not really used anymore. The entire industry has moved to SATA or NVMe for storage. Now, the T43 motherboard was designed with SATA in mind, however, a converter chip was put in and an IDE interface was used because that's what was more common at the time. If you want to do some modifications to a T43, you can add SATA interface support, uh, but honestly, it's really not worth the effort considering the modest performance improvements you'll be getting when there are other bottlenecks in the T43. Now, Lenovo ThinkPad switched to the SATA interface, uh, which is easy. Uh, you can put any modern hard drive in there as long as it uses the SATA interface. You can put an SSD in there. They do make IDE interface SSDs, but they are hard to find and they are expensive, so it's really not worth it. The optical drives on both are IDE, and they're actually compatible with each other. In fact, I'm using the T43 optical drive in the T60 right now because I didn't have anything else to put in there. I have a Ultra Bay battery in the T43 right now. The T43 and T60 both use DDR2 RAM. However, the T43 is limited to 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is barely enough to get by. That's like one or two tabs in Google Chrome and maybe a Word document, and then you're out of RAM. T60 takes up to 3 gigs of RAM. Oh my, that's a lot more. So you're not getting giant improvements, but 3 gigs is always going to be better than 2. Now, technically, these things will take 4 gigabytes of RAM. However, due to chipset limitations, it can only recognize and use 3 gigabytes. Now for the most important things about these ThinkPads, the processors, and the wireless cards. IBM ThinkPads, the fastest, newest IBM ThinkPads, like this T43, use single-core Pentium M processors, which were released back in 2004-2005. They're old. They're single-core. They are slow. So slow that the fastest Pentium M you can get for a T43, I believe it's a 2.33 gigahertz something Pentium M, it is still slower than the slowest core duo available for the T60. Um, I don't remember the exact model names, I'll put them up on the screen, and I'll put the pass mark scores too, just so you believe me. Uh, here's the pass mark score for the uh, fastest processor you can put in a T43, and here's the pass mark score for the slowest processor you can put in a T60. It's marginally faster, but it's still noticeably faster with the slowest core duo as opposed to the fastest Pentium M. That is sad. And this is dual core processors we're talking about so you're already even though the pass mark score isn't that much better just because it's a dual core processor you're going to see better performance now if you go up to the highest end core 2 duo that you could put in this machine um, again i don't remember the exact number but i'll put it on the screen and i'll put the pass mark score that is almost three times as fast as the fastest pentium m so while the T43 and older IBM ThinkPads will choke at even the most basic web pages nowadays, like this thing won't be able to handle YouTube, it's going to struggle to use Facebook, you might be able to check email on it. The T60, it's going to do that kind of slowly, 
but it can still do it. And you're not going to have too many severe stutters or severe lag when playing video, even through Facebook or YouTube. And another advantage the T60 has, especially when it comes to online streaming, is that it supports 802.11n wireless cards, while the T43 does not. T43 supports 802.11g, which is way slower. So if you want faster internet, you're definitely going to want to go with the T60. Granted, most T60s out there come with an 802.11g wireless card, but it's fairly easy to upgrade that. To conclude, really, with the comparison here between an old IBM ThinkPad and the next model Lenovo ThinkPad, there is really no reason to get an IBM ThinkPad unless you're a collector or an enthusiast. They just are not practical for everyday use anymore. Um, five or so years ago, I'd be singing a different tune. In fact, my sister used an R51, which is kind of a cheaper version of the T42, all the way up until 2015, and then she handed it off to me, and I used it for about a year and a half before it bit the dust. Um, but it, at, the, at the rate at which the internet is progressing and the higher demands that it requires from a computer, the Pentium M is just not cutting it anymore. A single core processor just will not be enough. So you need to get something just marginally faster. But it really is amazing. This is just one generation newer. This is just one model newer than this one. But the difference in performance and usability of the T60 over the T43 is almost a night and day difference. Now, T60 is not going to be the fastest thing around. It's going to be kind of slow compared to a modern computer, but it's definitely usable. You can use this to watch YouTube, check Facebook, check your email, play some older PC titles, especially the models with a dedicated GPU. We'll talk more about that in the video focused on the Core 2 Duo ThinkPads. Uh, you can use one of these as a daily machine. If you need it for school, you need it for notes, uh, you need to take notes and do schoolwork, this will be able to do it. It will be a bit slower than the newest laptops out there, but it can still do it. And honestly, with a higher-end Core 2 Duo put in one of these machines, which you could get for very cheap because it's a 12-year-old processor, you're actually going to get better performance than some of the entry-level notebooks today that use uh, Intel Atom or even Intel Celeron processors. So, as much as I love the IBM ThinkPads, I simply cannot recommend them as a daily driver anymore. Again, five or so years ago, I could probably say that you could use one of these as a backup computer. But nowadays, really, the only good use for IBM ThinkPads is either as a collector's item, um... Maybe something to run older software on, maybe a retro gaming laptop, this would be useful for that. Maybe if you have older hardware that won't work properly with newer computers or newer versions of Windows, you can keep one of these around as kind of a bridge between older hardware and modern hardware slash software. But as a daily driver, I just cannot recommend an IBM ThinkPad to anybody because you just aren't going to get good performance out of it. Uh, even the T60, even with a slower processor, is going to be faster. So if you need a computer on a very tight budget, uh, get a T60. If it comes down to a T43, T42, one of the IBM ThinkPads versus a T60, they're going to be around the same price, so you might as well get something that's infinitely more powerful and infinitely more future-proof. That is my look at IBM ThinkPads versus early Lenovo ThinkPads. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to stay tuned for the later episodes where we look at Core 2 Duo ThinkPads, we look at the early Core i5 and i7 ThinkPads, and we look at everything else in between. Thanks for watching, and have a great day, folks.